The Bell AH-1Z Viper is a two-seat, twin-engine, single-rotor attack helicopter. The AH-1Z is based on the AH-1W Super Cobra and features a new four-bladed composite rotor system, performance match transmission, four-bladed tail rotor, upgraded landing gear, and a fully integrated glass cockpit designed and produced by the American aerospace manufacturer Bell Helicopter. It is powered by two General Electric T700GE401C turboshaft engines with 1800 shaft horsepower each. This AH-1Z attack helicopter provides rotary wing close air support, anti-armor, armed escort, armed visual reconnaissance and fire support coordination capabilities for the U.S. Marine Corps under day or night and adverse weather conditions. The AH-1Z Viper is the latest and most potent form of the Vietnam War era AH-1 Cobra helicopter debuted in the late 1960s. During development of the single-engine AH-1 for the United States Army, the United States Marine Corps expressed interest in a twin-engine arrangement of the same attack platform which gave rise to the AH-1JC Cobra offshoot introduced in 1971. The line ultimately begot an entire family of twin-engine attack platforms all related to the original AH-1 with over 1270C Cobras and the related Super Cobra produced. The AH-1Z was developed during the 1990s and 2000s as a part of the H-1 upgrade program on behalf of the United States Marine Corps. It is essentially a modernization of the service's existing AH-1WS and was originally intended to be a rebuild program before subsequent orders were made for new build helicopters instead. The AH-1Z first flew on December 8, 2000. Bell delivered three prototype aircraft to the United States Navy's Naval Air Systems Command at Naval Air Station Patuxent River in July 2002 for the flight test phase of the program. Low-rate initial production began in October 2003, with deliveries running through 2018. In late 2006, a contract was awarded to Midget Defense Systems to develop a new linkless 20mm ammunition handling system to improve on the gun feed reliability of the existing linked feed system. The AH-1Z and Bell UH-1Y Venom Utility Helicopters share a common tail boom, engines, rotor system, drivetrain, avionics architecture, software, controls, and displays for over 84% identical components. Furthermore, it features a four-blade, bearingless, composite main rotor system, upgraded transmission, and a new target sighting system, amongst other improvements. Derived from the earlier Bell AH-1 Super Cobra, the AH-1Z Viper incorporates various improvements and advances, including new rotor technology, upgraded military avionics, updated weapon systems, and electro-optical sensors in an integrated weapons platform. Amongst other advantages provided by these changes, it has improved survivability and can locate targets at longer ranges and also attack them using precision weapons. The airframe was extensively redesigned to maximize crashworthiness. Measures include energy-absorbing landing gear, fuel vapor inerting systems, self-sealing fuel tanks, energy attenuating crashworthy seating, and a mass retention design approach applied to many major components. Active systems include countermeasure dispensers, radar warning, incoming or on-way missile warning, on fuselage laser spot warning systems, and the hover infrared suppression system to protect the engine exhausts. The AH-1Z equipped with a bearingless and hingeless rotor system, this has 75% fewer parts than that of four-bladed articulated systems. The rotor blades are composed of composites, which give them increased ballistic survivability. The rotor is equipped with a semi-automatic folding system, enabling the AH-1Z to be stored more efficiently aboard amphibious assault ships and other means of transportation. Efforts were made to maximize its maintainability and to minimize maintenance requirements. In comparison to the Super Cobra, numerous maintenance tasks have been eliminated, interactive electronic technical manuals have been produced, less spare storage is required, and accessibility has also been improved. Furthermore, various fault detection sensors are present to facilitate condition-based maintenance. The AH-1Z also equipped with a pair of redesigned stub wings, these being substantially longer than those of the preceding Super Cobra. Each one has an additional wingtip station for a missile such as the AIM-9 Sidewinder. 
Each stub wing has two other stations for 2.75 inch Hydra 70 rocket pods or AGM-114 Hellfire quad missile launchers. The N APG-78 longbow fire control radar can also be mounted on a wingtip station. Similarly, other mission equipment can be fitted to these stations, including 77 and 100 gallon external auxiliary fuel tanks, LUU-2 AB nighttime illumination flares, and numerous types of practice munitions. Underneath the nose of the AH-1Z is an AA-49E7 turret fitted with a 20mm M197 3-barreled rotary cannon. This weapon has a higher muzzle velocity and flatter trajectory than predecessors. It is also compatible with M50 series air-to-air -air rounds. The cockpit of the AH-1Z Viper has been designed so that both crew members have virtually identical controls. It can be readily flown from either the front or rear positions. These positions incorporate a hands-on collective and stick-side stick architecture, which enables many functions to be carried out by the pilot without moving their hands from the flight controls. Both of the two crew stations are provisioned with a pair of 8x6-inch multifunction LCDs and a single 4.2-inch dual-function LCD. The AH-1Z has an integrated avionics system developed by Northrop Grumman. This system includes two mission computers and an automatic flight control system. The communication suite combines a U.S. Navy RT-1824 integrated radio, UHF or VHF, ComSec and modem into a single unit. The navigation suite includes an embedded GPS inertial navigation system, a digital map system, and Midget's low airspeed air data subsystem, which allows weapons delivery when hovering. Crew members are equipped with the Thales Top Owl helmet mounted sight and display system. This display provides a 24-hour day or night capability and a binocular display with a 40 degrees field of view. Its visor projection provides forward-looking infrared or video imagery. Furthermore, it has been designed from the onset to accommodate in-service upgrades. The Lockheed Martin Target Sight System incorporates a third-generation FLIR sensor which provides target sighting and identification in day, night, or adverse weather conditions. It is a passive sensor, unlike radar, thus is untrackable. The TSS has various view modes and can track with FLIR or by TV. The same system is also used on the KC-130J Harvest Hawk. The armament of the AH-1Z Viper is equipped with a General Dynamics M197 20mm 3-barreled Gatling gun capable of firing up to 1,500 shots per minute. The Viper carries a combination of AGM-114 Hellfire missiles, AIM-9 Sidewinder missiles, and 2.75-inch Hydra 70 rockets. In the future, the AH-1Z will carry the Joint Air-to-Ground Missile, which is currently being developed by the Army and Navy in cooperation with Lockheed Martin. The Joint Air-to-Ground Missile will replace the AGM-114 Hellfire Missile for a short time after formally introduced in 2010. The AH-1Z Viper helicopter was under consideration by the government of South Korea as its next standard attack helicopter until the decision was reached in 2013 to pursue the AH-64E Apache instead. In April 2015, the U.S. State Department approved a possible foreign military sales to Pakistan for 15 AH-1Z Vipers with Hellfire missiles, associated equipment and support worth up to $952 million. In early 2016, Pakistan was reportedly set to receive 9 AH-1ZS by September 2018. However, Pakistan's order was placed on hold on account of political tensions between the U.S. and Pakistan. The order for 12 aircraft has not been canceled. By May 2019, nine have been built but are stored at the 309th Amarg base, awaiting a resolution to the friction between the two countries. In 2016, Bell was also interested in selling the AH-1Z to Poland and Czech Republic, which sought to retire their Soviet-era Mil Mi-24 gunships. In December 2019, the Czech Republic finalized the sale with the U.S. of 4 AH-1Zs for the Czech Air Force. In March 2022, Czech Defense Minister Jana Cernokova announced plans to buy further helicopters, attributing this decision to the recent Russian invasion of Ukraine. 
During 2016, it was reported that the Royal Moroccan Air Force was interested in procuring a number of AH-1ZS. In November 2016, Bell Helicopters signed a Memorandum of Understanding with Romanian airspace company Gimbav Brashov Group for potential collaboration on the AH-1Z. In August 2017, Romania also signed a letter of intent with Bell Helicopter to establish a joint venture with Romanian state-owned Romarm for the potential procurement of a number of AH-1ZS. In 2017, Bell promoted both the AH-1Z and the UH-1Y Venom to the Australian Army as a potential replacement for their existing fleet of Eurocopter Tiger attack helicopters. In January 2021, the Australian government announced that it would purchase the AH-64E Apache to replace its Tigers. In July 2017, Bell Helicopter and Polish Armaments Group signed a letter of intent planning on cooperating on the UH-1Y and AH-1Z helicopters, forming a potential bid for the Polish Kruk Attack Helicopter Acquisition Program, part of a wider modernization effort in March 2022, in light of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Poland has reportedly delayed a decision on new attack helicopters until after the completion of a sweeping security review. In October 2017, Thailand's Minister of Defense Prad Wonsawan stated that Thailand is looking onto replacing its fleet of aging AH-1F Cobra attack helicopters and will launch a procurement committee to look into the matter. Royal Thai Army officials have said that they are interested in the AH-1Z, as well as the Augusta A-129 Mangusta, Mil Mi-28, KXZ-10, Bell AH-1 Super Cobra, and Boeing AH-64 Apache. On April 27, 2018, the U.S. Defense Security Cooperation Agency announced it had received U.S. State Department approval and notified Congress of a possible sale to Bahrain of 12 AH-1ZS, 26 T-700GE 401C engines, and armaments for an estimated cost of $911.4 million. In November 2018, Bahrain confirmed the order for 12 AH-1ZS with deliveries to begin in 2022. On April 30, 2020, the U.S. Defense Security Cooperation Agency announced it had received U.S. State Department approval and notified Congress of a possible sale to the Philippines of either six AH-1Z attack helicopters and related equipment for an estimated cost of $450 million or six AH-64E Apache attack helicopters and related equipment for an estimated cost of $1.5 billion. Nigeria has sought to procure AH-1ZS for some time. Sales were initially blocked by Congress over human rights concerns. However, during April 2022, it was announced that the U.S. State Department had given its approval for the sale of the type along with support apparatus via a nearly $1 billion contract.